Hi, hello and welcome to another edition of China Teacher, where I share with you what it is like to be an English teacher in China. Today, I would like to talk about a very controversial topic, using the student's native language in the classroom. Is it a no-no or do you do it? If you want to know what I think about the subject, don't go anywhere and see you on the other side of the intro. Be a real bad boy. Welcome back, everybody. Well, first of all, I think I should mention that the first seven years of my career took place in, well, Spanish-speaking countries or in Spanish-speaking schools. I did work in San Diego in the U.S., um, working with uh, Central American kids that had arrived to San Diego but could not speak English. So um, at this school, the work that we did was to teach them English, but we had to do it in Spanish. Um, it, was, it was a bilingual um, school near uh, Camp Pendleton uh, in Oceanside. So yeah, most of the work that I did in the first in the first seven years was working with kids and people, adults that spoke Spanish. Um, there was a bit of an advantage to to be in that situation because I knew exactly where the students were coming from, and that helped me to speed up their learning um, because I knew what the hurdles were and I uh, and I knew um, what kind of things I needed to do just to expedite. The process, particularly when I worked in Oceanside in San Diego, because um, the kids had only like three years to to become uh, well fluent and and comfortable going going to school and attending lessons in English. So, yeah, it was it was a bit of a challenge over there. Having said that, after seven years, I wanted to challenge myself to do something a little bit more difficult. So that's when I started thinking perhaps I should go to Asia. Um, a place where I, uh, students are not going to understand me uh, if I speak Spanish and um, I won't understand what they're saying. So that seemed a little bit of a, a challenge and, and something that I wanted to test myself um, doing. So uh, that's what I did. I started looking at opportunities to work here and I landed over here. Now, the first kind of work that I did was working with little kids. So... When you're working with little children, most of the language that you're teaching at that point is very visual. So you have your flashcards and you and your miming and your yeah your acting. Um, so it's not that big a deal. I think that once you start teaching um, a little bit of, um, for example, you start teaching tenses or you start teaching grammar structures that that are a little bit more complicated. Um, you you can do pretty pretty easily by just acting or or drawing or showing pictures, but once you get to the point where there are abstract concepts, like when you need to explain, for example, the difference between an adjective and and an adverb, for example, a lot of kids say, "Oh, he swims good." So well, you can feed the student. Uh, the right answer, right? He swims well. Or you can explain to them, like, look, you 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 are using, um, I forgot what I say. He swims well. Uh, you're using an adjective when you should be using an adverb. But if you say these words, they they then you're adding a problem to the problem because they don't know what these things are. You need to you need to spend time teaching the meaning of these words. So that's what I mean. In these kind of instances, when when speaking the language is going to expedite the learning, the practice, that's my main concern. I want the kids to practice and use the language. So we're not using the word adverb and adjective. We're using the word well. We're using the word good or whatever the activity is. But if the student is making a mistake with these things, it's easier for me and it's better for the student, I think, if I say these words in, in Chinese so that he, he gets it and he knows what he's doing wrong and he, of course, learns what he needs to do, um, what is the right way to, to say what he wants to say. There you go. That's, that's one instance in, in which I think speaking the native language has a place and has a time uh, in the classroom. 
Um, I could think of other examples. Uh, if I were to be, if I were to teach, for example, the present perfect, then I need to, I need to explain what the past participle is. What do you say? You just say, well, look, that's, that's a third, third column in your list of irregular verbs. That's, that's what the past, past participle is. That's where it is. So you, you just memorize it and, and you know what it is. And, and that's how you use it in the present perfect. Well, that may work, but the, the truth of the matter is that a lot of these students, they have learned these things at school, but they don't know what the word is in English. So if I say it in Chinese, if I say, look, past participle, 过去分四, my tones might be wrong, so please don't jump at me. Uh, but if I say to them, look, 过去分四, ah, okay, so that's what you're talking about, because they know what it is. They just don't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't click. They don't make the connection automatically. But once you say that word in Chinese, then everything becomes easier. And as I mentioned, I can just jump into the practice and, and get them to use the past participles instead of trying to explain and figure out what a past participle is. So there you go. That's, that's my stance in, in terms of whether it is okay or not to, to use a, the student's native language in the classroom. I have some guidelines which I could summarize like this. If I'm working with little kids, um, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, and I'm going to give them like a, like a one-off instruction and a one-off command, I'd rather do it in Chinese. I'd rather do it in their native language so that I don't need to explain these things. Uh, all I want is the, the, the reaction, the action. The, the, I want the kids to do what I'm telling them to do. That's not what I'm teaching. That's just telling them, you sit over there, you sit over there, and you face the wall because we're going to do an activity in which you, look, you can't look at each other. If I'm doing this kind of activities, then those instructions I'll give them in Chinese. There's no point of me trying to waste time, spend time uh, explaining to them uh, what that means. So... If I'm giving one of instructions, I'll do it in the native language. Now, if there are instructions that are repetitive, for example, open your books or, or take a pencil or whatever, those kind of instru instructions, I would do them in English because, well, I use them constantly. So there you go. Now, if I'm talking to older kids, say 9, 10 and teenagers, the, the amount of Chinese that I use or the student's native language is... Um, limited to grammar structures or grammar words. I will, I will give the meaning in Chinese of what I'm trying to explain. So, for example, if I'm talking about the passive voice, yes, you can show it to them, but, but just say what the passive word, uh, sorry, say what the passive voice is in Chinese and boom, just jump into practice. That's, that's much better than spending time um, explaining what the passive voice is. There is something to consider is that in my particular situation at my center is I only see the students once a month, once a week. I see them an hour or an hour and a half each week. So I need to make the most out of the time that they spend with me. So yes, I, I, I sacrifice the benefit that they may be from learning through trying to understand what I'm saying. Some people argue that there is value in that and I don't oppose it, but in my situation, it's, it's more time effective if I just give it to them in Chinese so that we can just jump into practice. That's, that's the thing. So there you go, guys. That's, that's the topic that I wanted to discuss with you today. And well, if you're so kind, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about this topic, using the student's native language in the classroom. Do you have different guidelines? Do you do so? Do you oppose my guidelines? Let me know what you think and uh, we can keep the conversation going. All right. Well, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. And as always, please like, comment and share this video to your heart's content. Hey, and well, if you like the work that I'm doing, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are notified every time that I put a new video out, okay? Well, until the next one, keep well. Bye for now.